Applying liquids is all about putting down the right amount of salt. But how much is the right amount? Our goal with liquid applications is always to put down the minimum amount for the maximum benefit and the least environmental impact. To go over some basic definitions, the first way that we use liquids is pretreatment. Pretreatment is when you apply liquid brine before the snow so that you can prevent the bond at the pavement and your mechanical removal is more effective. The next definition is post-treatment. Post-treatment is whatever you're going to do after you're done scraping the lot to remove any residual product, snow and ice, from that lot. And the last definition is application rate. Application rates are typically defined in gallons per acre, which is the number of gallons of product you're applying per acre of the property. The proper application rate is extremely important because if you use too much product, you're now losing the efficiency you have gained by using liquids in the first place. If you use too little product, you're not gonna get the effectiveness that you're looking for. When we're pre-treating with liquid, we're typically putting down between 40 and 50 gallons per acre. Because each gallon of salt brine contains just over two pounds of salt, we're essentially putting down between 80 and 120 pounds of salt per acre. The timing of this application is extremely important. Typically speaking, 24 to 48 hours ahead of the expected snow event is the best timing. However, things like wind, rain, and high vehicular traffic can make those timings more sensitive, thereby making it most effective to apply it as close to the snowfall as possible. This application could happen three or four hours before the snowfall, but ideally the application will dry to the surface before the snow or ice event occurs for maximum effectiveness. When we're applying a pretreatment, we're always wanting to use our center fan nozzle on our VSI boom. The fan nozzle is going to give us an even coverage all the way across that eight foot center boom. And then we're gonna use the small nozzles on the outside of the boom. It's very important to use the small nozzles because when we're applying a pretreatment, we're doing a low volume application. And the only way to maintain proper pressure on our nozzles is to use the lower flow rate nozzles to get proper coverage. Behind the truck should be an even swath of coverage that looks like a light mist has fallen on the parking lot. Again, the purpose of this is not to prevent accumulation, it's just to prevent that bond with the pavement. When post-treating with liquids, we're typically applying between 80 and 120 gallons per acre, effectively putting down 160 to 240 pounds of salt per acre. This is obviously substantially less than we'd typically be applying in granular form, again, because we're skipping that phase change by using salt in a liquid form. The timing of this application is always going to be after we're done plowing the lot. So this may be directly after plowing the lot, it may be two hours later, it just depends on how your client site is set up. Typically speaking though, we recommend doing the application after the entire lot's plowed to avoid cross-contamination of any snow being plowed over a freshly sprayed area. Assuming no extenuating circumstances with the wind, we could apply this immediately behind the truck. In theory, you could be plowing a path and spraying liquid at the same time. When applying a post-treatment, we're always going to use the stream nozzles on your VSI boom. So the stream nozzles are the top fitting that spray the pencil line straight down to the ground and actually leave lines behind the truck. The reason that this is so important is because when we're post-treating, we're applying on top of snowpack and ice, and the best way to get that snowpack and ice to go away quickly is to break it up. And because the VSI boom uses high pressure, those pencil streams will actually help break that up and allow the brine to work from the bottom up. For our outside nozzles, we're always going to select our medium or large size nozzles. The way that you're gonna know which one to choose is going to depend on the size, site, and the average speed you're gonna be driving. Typically speaking, on a smaller to mid-sized parking lot, you're going to be using the medium-sized nozzles. On a larger commercial, industrial type campus or site, you're gonna be using the larger nozzles. When you're post-treating behind the truck, you're going to see the pencil lines in the snow and ice, and you're also going to see faint coverage on your outside nozzles. After 15 to 20 minutes, you should start seeing large patches of bare pavement, and if the sun's out, it may even be totally bare in that timeline. The way that you're going to know if you've applied the right amount overall is if you get back to the site three to four hours later and you don't have bare pavement, you likely either didn't apply enough product or you didn't mechanically remove the snow well enough in order to get to that bare pavement. Now that we've covered application rates and how much product to put down, let's talk about what we're putting down. Typically speaking, when you're putting down liquids as a contractor, you're putting down a blend of salt brine and brine additives, which are additives that are made to blend with salt brine. The blend that we put down depends on a lot of different things. First and foremost, the weather. What's the temperature outside? What's the pavement temperature? 
There are times when you can get away with just using straight brine. And those times are when the temperature is over 25 degrees, the sun is out, or you know it's gonna be above freezing that day. We typically recommend that anything above 15 degrees will use a 95-5 blend. So that's 95% salt brine, 5% brine additive. When the temperature's under 15 degrees, we'll typically recommend using a 90-10 blend. Again, 90% salt brine, 10% salt brine additive. And then on our sensitive areas or critical infrastructure, such as sidewalks, parking decks, or along buildings, we're gonna recommend using an 80-20 blend. And that's because the additives provide a lot of benefit for preserving those surfaces in those critical areas. So we've covered standard application rates, but of course there are circumstances when we're going to deviate from that. One of the times is what we call interstorm applications. So a typical pre-treatment is going to last three to four scrapes over that lot with a blade before it becomes ineffective. If you get an extended snow event spanning multiple days, or if it's just a site that requires a lot of scrapes during the course of a single day, you may want to reapply to help prevent that bond with the pavement to continue. With liquids, it's always easier to prevent than to react. We're always going to use preventative measures instead of waiting and having to scrape it off later. Another situational difference is rain. So obviously rain, that's a challenge with liquids because what you're applying is mostly water. When there is rain and it's going to turn to freezing rain, the best time to apply a liquid application is right before that transition. I know it can be difficult or it's not always possible to hit that timing perfectly, but the punchline here is to apply it as close to that changeover as possible. This is going to help prevent the product from being totally diluted before that ice tries to start forming. Some other exceptions to the rules of these liquid applications are wind. So if you have high winds, we'll never recommend doing a pretreatment especially if it's dry blowing snow. And typically the only type of snow that blows readily is dry snow. The reason for this is because dry snow blows easily across the parking lot and keeps the surface safe because there's no moisture in that snow to bond to the pavement. If we would have applied a pretreatment in that situation, what will actually happen is that blowing snow will stick to the pretreatment and create a layer of ice. So if there's going to be dry blowing snow, no pretreatment. The same could be said for post-treatment. If you have a lot that's mostly bare pavement after scraping, if you do a blanket application on that entire lot when there's dry blowing snow, you're actually going to make the conditions worse. If you are servicing in a climate with high moisture content in the snow, you may need to deviate from the standard pre-treatment or post-treatment application rates. I would recommend adding 20 to 40 gallons per acre on top of your standard rates. So if your standard rate is 80, you don't want to apply 100 to 120 gallons per acre to compensate for that high moisture content. So in this video, We've talked about basic terms and definitions. We've talked about pre-treatment application rates, post-treatment application rates. We've talked about brine blends, and we've talked about when we need to make adjustments to our applications. Succeeding with liquids is not always an overnight venture, but having these standard baselines and exceptions to the rules is a very good place to start. By using these recommended standard application rates and by avoiding applications when we talk about avoiding them, you can elevate your liquid IQ and be off to the strongest possible start with your liquids program.